everyone, Fox is here and welcome to my weekly wrap-up. And this is going to be the wrap-up for the week between August 22nd and August 28th. I know that I'm quite late with my review for that week. Unfortunately, I've been super busy getting ready for my trip. However, I read quite good books that week and I cannot wait to tell you. During that week, I managed to read one novel, complete one audiobook and read four graphic novels. So let's get started with graphic novels. The first two graphic novels that I read were issue number one and two of Merry Man by Robert Rohde. This is a very interesting take on Robin Hood and Merry Man who turned out to be all queer and the story kind of progresses from there. Um, I read only two issues and there are only two issues out so far. The third one is coming out later in September. However, I cannot really tell you much in terms of the plot because the plot really revolves about everyone um, around everyone being gay or queer or transgender there is a lot of diversity in this story but at the same time we do have the same characters that we have in the original Robin Hood story which is quite interesting I cannot say that I loved it but I really 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 enjoyed it it's quite my thing to have this sort of queer retelling and this um, two issues I gave uh, 3.5, 3.75 stars, almost 4 stars, and Goodreads, I did enjoy them, I liked the art as well, um, I can, like I said, I cannot really comment on the plotline, just for one thing, there are spoilers, and secondly, it's just issue number 1 and 2, so the story has not progressed much, however, I did enjoy it, and if it is your thing, and you do like queer retellings, please check this one out. I actually never heard about the series before until someone mentioned it on Twitter and asked for recommendations and someone recommended me the series and I was like, yeah, I'm going to read that. So yeah. Then I read issue number one of The Shadow Hero, The Green Turtle Chronicles by Jean Liuin Yang. And I was a bit disappointed, to be honest, because this is one of those graphic novels that keeps appearing on my Goodreads recommendations. And unfortunately, it did not live up to my expectations. I expected it to be something of a blend of a Chinese mythology plus a, su plus a superhero, which is, in a way, it is. However, the story itself starts with the backstory about the family of this guy and this guy is not even in the picture in the sense that he's not really at the center of the story of the plot line and then by the end of it his mother just goes like oh you have to be a superhero and um, that's about it so I was left a bit disappointed. I cannot really say much about the art style. It was okay. I liked it. But the plot line was a bit meh. It was not really about what I expected it to be about. So I gave it about three stars. And the last graphic novel that I read that week was this Stratford Zoo Midnight Review Presents Macbeth. That graphic novel was fantastic. First of all, it combines three things that I absolutely love. One, it's a book. Second, it has Shakespeare in it. And third, it has anthropomorphic animals, which means that this is a story about Stratford Zoo and we have animals there who stayed Shakespeare at night. What? It's just phenomenal. I loved it. It was hilarious. It was quite funny on all levels. First of all, there are animals who are avoiding, you know, zookeepers who are trying to stage Shakespeare. At the same time, there is audience which is watching that Shakespeare on stage and that audience is also consisting of zoo animals. And there are animals in there who make comments about the stage production. And there is also some funny stuff which is happening on stage. Jesus Christ, it was so good. It was just so funny. There are so many levels there. First of all, of course, we have a graphic novel itself about animals in the zoo. Then there is a second level where they are on stage. And there is also the audience. And there is sometimes break in the fourth wall. And I just loved it. It is super colorful, the art is gorgeous, it's really funny, it's not offensive, they did modify Macbeth uh, to fit their purposes. It's just, ah, oh, it was so lovely, and apparently there is more, and I hope that there is will be like a whole series of those graphic novels, because this one was fantastic, and I gave it five stars. 
The only audiobook that I listened to that week and finally finished was the audiobook that I had been listening for quite a few months, and I'm so glad that I'm done with it, and that was The Night Manager by John Le Carre. Even though this is a paperback that I have, and this is a TV show uh, tie-in paperback, because as you can see, there is Tom Hiddleston and Hugh Laurie, and they're both are in BBC adaptation of the TV show, which I have not watched yet because I wanted to read the book first. And this is a basically a paperback, but I did listen to the whole audiobook on Audible. I did enjoy this book. However, I think I did myself a bit of a disservice because I was taking breaks from listening to this audiobook. And reason for that being because I don't really have that much free time during the week to listen to an audiobook, and that was quite a long audiobook. I think it's about 17 or 19 hours long. Um, I mean, there are definitely longer audiobooks than that, but this one, considering how thin the, the paperback itself is, it's about um, it's 450 pages long. I expected the audiobook to be um, quite shorter, but the thing, since I don't have much time to listen to an audiobook during the week, and I do not commute, I don't drive, and that's why when I'm actually at home and I have free time to listen to an audiobook, I'd rather li actually read a physical copy. But in this case, I didn't want to switch between a physical copy and an audiobook. That's why I was trying to get my way, like, you know, get my way through the audiobook, and it was taking me really ages to do that. But I finally finished it, and I did enjoy it. Since it is um, John Le Carre, and this is the second novel by John Le Carre that I read, the first one that I read was Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which I enjoyed immensely, and I read that one, I actually read it, and I didn't listen to an audiobook. I was, um, I knew what to expect in terms of the style, um, however, I found that the the setting itself was not that engaging for me. I did enjoy the development of the story and I did enjoy all the parts that had to do with Jonathan Pine and Jonathan Pine is the main protagonist who at the beginning of the novel he's a night manager even though he used to be in the military before so he's not just um, a regular civilian however when there is an opportunity to pass on some secret information um, a woman gets killed and he feels that he's responsible so he sets on to find the person who is responsible for her death. Um, this is um, not exactly the summary that you will get here. However, Jonathan gets himself really um, entangled into a lot of political intrigue and a, a very big operation going on. Essential, essentially, there is a man who is really powerful. He um, trades uh, drugs and um, guns and all of that stuff and there are several governments which are trying to pin him down and catch him so Jonathan has to go undercover essentially but his own objective here is that he wants to find the person and supposedly that per that is the same person who was responsible for the death of that woman I liked the writing style and I did enjoy the narrator of the audiobook however since it was kind of slow paced at times there are a lot of self-reflection from Jonathan he keeps thinking about things and what ifs and what could have happened and what went wrong and even though those parts were quite really lyrical and interesting to listen to at the same time it made an impression as if the book was endless um, there are quite a, a few parts of it which were very high, like very fast paced, and I did enjoy them way more than those lyrical parts. Um, I also think that the narrator did the accents quite well, even though some of them were a bit artificial sounding because this guy moves around through um he goes to quebec he goes to london he goes to jamaica he goes somewhere else he just goes all over the place and that was kind of cool but at the same time the story takes uh, i think takes place in 80s or 90s and that was not the era that i really was interested in um, I'm, to be completely honest, I'm not even sure. It does not really reference the dates, but just based on some other stuff, um, I had an impression that that was the time period when this book was um, 
set in, but I did enjoy it. However, the ending of the book left me a bit bewildered, and that's not because because the way it wrapped up. No, I would say that if I were more invested into characters, that would probably be the ending that I would want for the characters. However, since I read um, another book by John Le Carré, Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy, which had a huge revelation at the end of the book, like the hugest one. It was basically thing that turned everything upside down. And I expected something like this happen here. Unfortunately, it didn't, which made me very sad. And nevertheless, I did enjoy it. And I hope to watch TV show sometime soon. Um, since it has Tom Hiddleston and Hugh Laurie, both of whom I really like, I'm sure I will enjoy TV show. I also think that TV show will make the storyline a bit more fast-paced and would be quite interesting to watch visually since there is a lot of traveling involved and moving around. So I'm looking forward to, to watching the TV show. But as far as the audiobook goes, I gave the narrator about 3.5 stars and the plot itself 3 stars. And the last, but definitely not least, the book that I read that week was Trial by Fire by Josephine Angelini. And this is a YA fantasy novel, the first book in the trilogy, I believe. Yes, the, it is in trilogy. And I did enjoy it. You know what? I picked this book up from Book Outlet a couple of months ago just on a whim. I didn't know anything about it. I just liked the cover. And let's be honest, this cover is gorgeous. I really like the... Um, intricate, you know, symbols here, and you basically get to know what it means once you read the book. I knew nothing about the book when I picked it up, and when I read at the top that it had a must-read romance, that made me kind of skeptical. Let's be honest, whenever the book is positioned itself as a romance, while it is actually a fantasy book, I kind of get, you know, really suspicious of it because I'm not a huge fan of YA um, romance, I'm not a huge fan of contemporary romance, and in this case, I was just looking for some simple read. I wanted to read YA fantasy. And you know what? This book really surprised me. I did enjoy it, and I enjoyed it a lot. The main protagonist of this book is Lily, and she lives in a real world where she is allergic to everything. Her best friend Tristan always is very protective of her, but at the same time, he is kind of a playboy. And she likes him, but she doesn't really like that side of him. So one day, something happens between them, and she thinks that they're dating. But then, during a party, turns out that they're not. So, after the party, she gets transported to a different world, and then weird stuff starts happening. I don't want to say much about it. Um, I just want to say that there are parallel worlds in this story, and everyone has some sort of doppelganger or um, a duplicate, a double of themselves. Um, in that new world that Lily finds herself in, she's actually a powerful witch. So, this story involves magic and witches, and the magic system is very very interesting and the world itself is also very interesting. The originality of the plot and the originality of the magic system actually blew me away. I, it's been a while since I read something that original and I did enjoy the story. Another thing that I really want to um, tell you guys is that even though here it says that it's like a sizzling romance, that's not exactly true, let's be honest, because the romance is there, but it's very slow paced. It's not something like an insta-love, which I'm absolutely, like, I absolutely hate that. I hate that trope. It's not that bad here, let's be honest. It's, um... It's, it's quite a good book, and I'm not really sure why it's being marketed as a romance, because it's actually a YA fantasy, and it has a very strong female protagonist and a lot of quite cool guys in there. Uh, so yeah, I read this book, and while being somewhere um, in the middle of this book, I just went to Book Outlet and purchased the second novel, and then I went to Amazon and pre-ordered the last installment in this trilogy that is coming out later in the month at the 
the end of yeah at the end of September. So I'm quite in love with the series. I have not really heard anyone talk about this series. I'm quite curious. I feel as if this is quite an underappreciated book, and this book was really really pleasurable. I I I didn't even know what to say. The world building was good. The character development was good. And another thing that I enjoyed was that. Even villains supposedly were very cunning and could have crushed Lily immediately. At the same time, it didn't happen, and there was a very good explanation for that. So it's not just like there was limitless power or uh, there was uh, limitless, uh, you know, influence or just the world was so well put together in that sense because there is always a limit there is always something else going on um there that it's just i i don't know i really enjoyed it it's probably one of the very few ya fantasy books that really impressed me right off the bat and i went expecting absolutely nothing like honestly absolutely nothing because nobody talks about these books nobody holds them and they are on book outlet and i never hear anyone talk about them so if by any chance you read the story and you enjoyed these books as much as i did please let me know down below obviously no spoilers because i have not read second book yet and the third one is not out yet so yeah please let me know and i mean like seriously this cover is so gorgeous I, I just love it. The only thing that disappoints me is that I couldn't find this book in a hardcover. So this cover comes only as a paperback and books number two and three have the same design but they are hardbacks. That makes me kind of sad. However, they're so pretty and uh, it's so floppy and uh, I just love it. I wish either all of them would have been as paperbacks or all of them would have been as um, hardbacks but alas, alas. And yeah. It's quite good. I think whatever we have at the back, uh, at the back of the book, and whatever we have uh, here, you know, like all the praise and everything, does not really do justice to the book. I had a feeling as if it kind of diminishes the actual plot. So um, I, I hope I made some sense here. What I loved about the magic system here was that it's it's not infinite so to become a witch to to have power everyone has some sort of a stone and this stone is used as identification as um source of power it, it's used as everything pretty much and to become a witch you have to have that certain power the certain level of power but it's not just easy it's it's not just by having the stone itself you also need to know how to channel that energy and Everything is so peculiar in that world because that world is sort of a blend of a real world, a, like a techno world and also fantasy world. And I I just really enjoyed this book. I'm, I'm still very surprised about how much I enjoyed it. So I gave this book four stars. It was not without flaws, obviously, but I think it's a very solid start for the trilogy and I cannot wait to read book number two. This is it, guys. This is my wrap-up for the week between August 22nd and August 28th. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm sorry once again that I'm so late with this review. But I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know down in the comments if you read any of the books that I mentioned or if any of these sound appealing to you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye!